What's going on Reef Builders? Welcome to another vlog here at the Reef Builder Studio. Today I am sharing with you a video that is very much overdue and I'm going to give you a complete tour of the first functional workhorse aquarium system here at the studio. This is the coral flat, the coral table. This is where all the corals start out and I've had a lot, a lot, a lot of fun with it. And uh, since day one, the corals that have been put into this tank have done so, so well, like really ridiculously well. Probably doesn't hurt that I'm here all the time making sure everything's perfect because you guys are gonna see this on video. Um, but yeah, this thing has really been like a distillation of all of my ideas about simplified, effective reef keeping. So uh, I guess before we go in and show you like all the different corals, I want to thank Evan for holding the camera. And I want to just kind of tell you about all the equipment and what's running this tank. Um, and then we're gonna dive in and show you all the different little coral neighborhoods in this big coral table. So to start out, this is a shallow acrylic uh, flat aquarium. It is four feet wide, it's eight feet long, and it's just about 10 inches high. So it's not that much vertical space, but that's okay, because what we want is surface area to hold as many corals as possible. So although it's eight feet long, we have a, a one foot section here reserved in the back. This is all of the filtration happening in this aquarium. So if you watch some of the earlier videos, you'll know that there's a Vectra uh, M1 here that is basically being used as a hybrid closed loop. So it's pulling from the tank and it's pulling from the back area and that's basically our filtration through the system. So what do we have back here? We got the trusty John Land heater in an area of high water flow. We've got a reef octopus. I don't know what model, but it's plenty big enough for this 200 gallon tank. And um, this is actually a little bit wet skimming that Evan was supposed to clean out earlier. So we had a pretty flush skimmer, but this pulls out a ton, a ton of funk. Um, so a new addition to the system here is an Avas Marine calc reactor. And this is being fed by a GHL doser two. I think we're up to 5,000 mLs, so five liters, a little bit over one gallon every day. And I still have some tweaks because I don't like how it's running down the side. But this is providing some of the evaporation and helping to keep our pH up. And uh, right next to Evan right there, you can see the big uh, pickle barrel, which is basically gravity feeding a float valve. So there's no electrical ATO here. Um, so whatever top off the calc reactor is not making up for, this makes up the difference. And I think that is a lot of the major equipment. Um, I did add the uh, MaxSpec Gyre XF330 model, just to add a little bit more flow, a little bit more of a jet to go down the end of this tank um, because it needed it. One thing that's been really fun and challenging for the studio is trying to keep everything super duper clean. So this is a Marine Depot controller board and it's funny how many of the things I have here that I just look at. I look at them for weeks, I think about it for weeks about how I want it to look. So I painted this white and um, let's see, this is a controller for the protein skimmer, controller for the return pump. This is a controller for the CHA pump that's on this system which is gonna be tied into this tank next. Uh, we've got the controller for the gyre pump, and then this is the thermostat for the MyCom heater, 25 degrees Celsius, which is seven, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So everything is right here, really nice and neat, and I can take this off and put it at an angle and clearly see everything that's behind it. Um, I guess the last important thing for chemical uh, chemistry management is I've got the Aquamedic Evo Doser here. Again, spray painted white, because everything's white, gotta have that custom job. But it's a really cool, uh, basic, straightforward uh, dosing pump system that I'm using for this tank. And um, here's the, uh, the reservoir right here, the top off containers. This is not nearly enough, so this is actually gonna go on some uh, bigger tanks in the future. And then eventually I'm gonna have some big like five gallon carboys. Um, so we have like a ton of reserves. Of course, it's really important to have some good, bright, um, colorful reef aquarium lighting on any uh, coral tank. And uh, 
channel sponsor Ecotech Marine provided these six uh, Radeon Gen 4 Pros that Evan and I put together on this beautiful, beautiful mounting system. We even got all the power supplies cleanly, cleanly put into a basket over there so everything is good and tight. And we're actually gonna do this here a little bit later when some more of these pumps come in. And now the most common question that uh, you know us reefers get about lighting is what profile do you run? So I started this tank um, with just the blue channels and those were running for about eight hours at 50% intensity just to kind of break in the tank to make sure that we didn't have um, too much algae growth. And so it's been about three months now, I think. Yeah, I'd say so we'll call it a solid three months since these lights have been running and everything's been flowing. Um, maybe about two months ago, I bumped the blues up to 100% over that nine, eight hour photo period and uh, put up the warm white only at 10%. Um, but now that this tank is really, really well settled in, just this past week, I increased the cool whites, the warm whites, the greens, and the reds to 20%. The current schedule now is about uh, eight to nine hours of blues with an hour ramp up, ramp down up to 100%. So that's for the blue, royal blue, violets, and the UVs. And then for four hours in the middle of the day, uh, the whites, the cool whites, the warm whites, the red and the green ramp up to about 20% um, power. So eventually this is gonna be the highlight tank and I'm gonna bring those uh, white levels and those color levels uh, a little bit higher. But since all the different corals are in here right now, um, still being like a, a little bit cautious because we have some low light uh, shrooms, chalices and things like that um, that need a little bit less uh, intensity. If you've been following the channel, you know that this uh, winter, uh, right before Christmas, I set this up as my Christmas tree aquarium. And this aquarium has uh, four colonies of Christmas tree worm rocks, which are closed right now. Um, but it, this tank has become a, a kind of a staging area for corals that are a little bit more hungry. And uh, this is where I put all the feeding. Um, let's take it down below so you can kind of see what's happening. So just turn this off because we have some Montes in there we're gonna use for an aquascape here soon. But this is the, the pump that's feeding the tank. And what's really important about this aquarium here is this has been where I've been feeding the tank. So one thing I didn't realize is that there was a, a lot of corals were, they were not like bleaching from too much light. They just got really, really pale, even though this tank was growing some algae. I always think if a tank's growing algae, it has nutrients. Um, but a group of corals were just kind of stalling in a way, and they were a little bit pale. But since I put this tank in line with this system, I've been really, really hitting this tank with food and uh, a ton of corals uh, in the main system have really come to life. So now I am actually, uh, similarly to the Worldwide Corals Farm that I showed off in the video yesterday, um, I'm feeding this tank once or twice a day really heavily. I put this on a feed timer so all that food can trickle out into the rest of the tank. And the, uh, the benefit to the corals um, has been quite impressive. I really, really couldn't believe how starved these corals were. But now that everybody's looking good, well, let's take a closer look at the actual corals. Here it is, a coral flat filled with gorgeous, beautiful, thriving corals. Like I said, we've got a bunch of different neighborhoods here. And I'm just gonna kind of walk you through some of my favorites um, because these big Montiporas here are about to go into the Red Sea Peninsula tank. That's gonna be a Montipora style aquarium. All right, so let's, uh, let's get it started with one of the uh, kind of the most obvious things. This is the frag tray. So anytime I get new frags with a plug, with a base, they kind of go on here. And uh, there's a variety of different things. We just uh, put a bunch of zoanthids there that I brought from home after uh, they got it cleaned up. Got a variety of acros here in the bright lights that are actually doing really, really well. Getting a ton, a ton of color. Things are a little bit pastel -y because it's bright and I've just started feeding. But um, for example, these uh, Ghanis here, they've been here since day one. These were wild corals. And this is actually kind of an orangey pink Ghani, but with the white light, you can't see so much. But these have actually grown so much in just a few months that I've actually had to move them apart. I had to move them apart because these guys were like really kind of crowding each other out. 
Let's see what else we have. Here's a little bit of a catch-all with my, uh, my gold tip elegance. Got a little bit of a frag catching chamber here for little cuttings of leather corals. And speaking of leather corals, I've got a little cluster here that has just begun. So we got some green polyp leather, Palau green nephthia, a couple funky ones, and you know there's gonna be some green polyp leather here. Speaking of green polyp, we've got some green star polyp here that I can't wait to use in some community reef tanks. But um, the one on the right is like really, really bright and the one on the left is a little bit greener, less toxic green. So I'll be curious to see how those come together. And uh, here in this back corner, requiring a little bit less light, is the, uh, the Euphilia collection. You can see we've got uh, some orange frog spawn, some orange hammer, a toxic green hammer coral. Um, there's a really neat uh, hybrid uh, hammer torch, sorry, not a hammer torch, a hybrid torch frog spawn. It's got this really eerie yellow green, slightly orangish tips. Um, here's the, uh, the holy grail torch that's coming together. And then um, I've got a selection of Lobophilia sent to me here from Western Australia. And there's the pump that feeds uh, the Christmas tree aquarium. Uh, moving right along, we have these little micromooses that are also brightening up uh, since I've been feeding. And I, again, I just turned the lights a little bit brighter, so those guys are gonna wake up a little bit more. And uh, one of the corals that I actually collected in the Solomon Islands is this branching Econopora here. Not super colorful, but uh, very neat and very rare. And another Solomon Island coral is a long polyp leather coral. I actually collected this off a of World War II shipwreck. And I know it's got long polyps, but it's nothing like the weeping willow leather. And that'll be a little bit more obvious when I get the weeping willow leather coral in here. Now you may remember from the early series, this is Evan's used leather coral. And it's not the classic neon green polyp leather um, that we've had Endeavor for a while, but it does have really, really nice green polyps. Uh, right next to it is a cluster of one of my favorite, total absolute favorite corals. Um, this is the branching Vivides complanata. Really, really awesome piece. Next to the branching Favites complanata, here's my Dallas Acro that I got from Gallery Aquatica. This thing is super duper nice. It's really, really different from a, uh, from a green slimer. It's got a little bit more of that neon green and almost that blue, blue hint of coloration here on the tips where it's growing really fast. Very neat piece. A big, big chunk of uh, Milka Stylo is one of the few corals we've ever gotten from the Red Sea. And this coral has been in here just about as long as anything. And uh, here's some nice green candies. Um, so the one that you see there with the green mouse and the green stripes is a strain that I've had in my care since about uh, the year 2001. So that's a really, really special coral to me. And right next to it, got a little basket of Colorado sunburst anemones. Now I brought these over from home like shortly after they split and they've done so, so, so well. Very, very beautiful uh, reef animal. I'm gonna try to provide these with their own uh, aquarium here very soon. And next to it is uh, kind of a timeout coral. This is actually a beautiful gold galaxia. The galaxia on the left is actually just gold, and then the one on the right um, is uh, gold with some green accents. This is a sick, sick, awesome coral. Um, on this other frag rack, you can see a bunch of the lords. So it's beautiful, beautiful colonies of lords. Some of them I picked up in Reefstock, Australia. Here's kind of like uh, the far corner where I've been tucking samacoras and shrooms and uh, things that need lower flow and lower light, including the stylocinella. <clears throat> but probably what you can see is dominating the, uh, the aquas, the uh, corals in this tank is a bunch of different green monties. So this is the branching uh, green cap, Jason Fox slow burn, Langside cap, Evan's uh, special bumpy monty, which looks like Spongodes, but it's not. Capitotomy. We've got the uh, Jedi Mind Trick right next to it, um, a red foliosa, and then there's the, uh, the old school true Undata there. 
Um, so these corals haven't been getting that much light, but um, they're about to go in the, uh, in the Red Sea tank over there as soon as we're done with this particular video. What else do we have? We've got a nice purple digi here. Um, that's also, we're gonna break that up and put it into the Red Sea tank. And over there, you can see I've got tiles of a bunch of different corals, mostly in crusters and zoanthids, um, just giving them a lot of real estate so they can start encrusting and uh, doing their thing and have a ton of room to grow, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, very, very happy with how this system is working and functioning. Um, right now, it's kind of become like a catch-all for, for everything that comes through here at the studio. But very soon I'm looking forward to not having neighborhoods in single tanks, but um, having tanks that are dedicated to these groups of corals. Well, all right guys, I hope you liked that little flyby tour of the first coral flat here at the Reef Builder Studio. I cannot, I couldn't be any happier with how lush the corals have become, how happy they are, how fast some of this stuff is growing, and I haven't even started really fine tuning the pH in here. That calc reactor has been on there for just a few days. Um, but the tank is staying clean, really low algae. The only uh, bottleneck I've had is like nutrients. So I've had to really pound this tank with food. And uh, yeah, it's just so much fun after we've uh, finished some of the work here at the studio, just kind of like turn off the flow, come over here and enjoy some happy, thriving corals. But now that this first overview of the tank is completed, and I know I passed over a bunch of stuff, I just kind of wanted to show you different sections of the tank. Um, it's time for Evan and I to take out a bunch of corals, mostly all these huge, like uh, expansive monoporas, and we're gonna put together a monopora specific aquarium setup in the Red Sea tank is coming up next. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up if you loved it, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you never miss an awesome, enthusiastic reef aquarium video from the Reef Builders crew. So thank you guys for tuning in and we'll catch you guys in the next one.